What's up fam, this episode's a little bit different today. Um, rather than being a traditional vlog type episode, sorry, they got the finger on the microphone. Like I said, rather than being a traditional vlog type episode, it's actually uh, an interview. I went down, I was able to uh, reach out through Instagram and meet one of, and introduce myself to the uh, one of the coaches who's also a chemistry teacher down at uh, Verina High, which is like the main high school here in our area in Verina, obviously Verina High. Kind of cool VHS is their little VHS. I'm like, oh, it's totally lost on most of these kids that their school's called VHS. They don't even know what a VHS is. Anyways, was able to go meet him, uh, was able to interview him about how he got into teaching, his coaching, and a little bit about his running. He has a lot of running on the side. He's actually going to be stepping down from coaching to focus more on his running. And I'm hoping to um, go catch a couple races with the guy. So you may be seeing him more soon and if so it's something I'll definitely be vlogging because as you'll see in the interview um, he likes to he's a little unusual in how he runs his marathons and 5k's and all that kind of stuff he sticks out a little bit so I'll definitely be vlogging if we if I end up going with him on a, one of these I was able to not only interview him but meet the JV girls and boys team I got some b-roll of that uh, and so I just I, mean, I hope you enjoy it like I said, it's a little bit of a different episode but I hope you enjoy it if not be back tomorrow with another regularly scheduled episode so enjoy or skip it come back the next day peace I'm Rick Catalano. I teach science or science and chemistry at Verina High School here in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I coach the boys volleyball team. I've coached the JV baseball team. I am the scorekeeper, voice of the basketball team, and I'm not going to be doing the football games as well, so I'm all over the place. Um, I grew up in Rochester, New York, Western New York, and uh, the way our high school did it is you had to do so much community service hours to get your diploma. So a friend of mine's mom was a teacher and she ran a GED class. So I did my community service with her doing GED prep. And it was amazing to me how people that own their own businesses could do all their own accounting, couldn't do simple math problems. And then you're helping them out with that and seeing how they get it. I started doing that because my dad actually got a GED. So I knew how happy I was when he got his. So I just wanted to give back with that. And so it was really cool once I started teaching be able to make those connections with those kids like my first three years of teaching I taught in Arizona and there's kids that I still keep in touch with from there you know and the way we do our SOLs I once my kids are in chemistry they get my cell phone number to ask me questions because they're gonna have questions in that class and I want them to have access to me so at the end of the school year when they get their when I get my SOL scores back I don't let them know by email or text message they have to see me face to face or through FaceTime just because I want to see their reactions. Like I've had kids throw their phones in the air. They're so happy. I think I had four kids cry this year once they found out they passed. I think that's the real reason I'm teaching. You know, it's to make those connections with the kids and like as you saw me just a minute ago making fun of those kids out there. Liani, I taught her as a freshman, you know, and still between teaching her and volleyball I have the opportunity to make those connections with the kids and actually make a difference there's I had a kid that plays soccer college out in Oregon his mom called me up to ask me to go to dinner with them you know the week before he left because he wanted to make sure he saw me you know so it's those connections with the kids with the family where they you know the mom's willing to waste I don't say waste but use some of her last week with her son to go to dinner with me as well which means you made a difference and that's where it's really worth it in my mind I've worked in Arizona, New York, and Virginia. So I've been licensed in three states, and in between jobs, I've worked in industry as a quality assurance person. So like the new grocery store that's been out here, Wegmans, I worked for their corporate headquarters in Rochester. Okay. And well, it was cool, I felt like a monkey pressing buttons. You know, I sit in my lab, do a test, walk the floor, go to the other lab, do a test, walk the floor. Basically, it was there was no joy, it was the same thing every day. You have to meet new people, but here at teaching, you can teach the same class or the same subject, same matter, four times in a day. It could be four completely different classes. You know, four completely different lessons, the way the kids react to it. 
And that's what I think is the fun part. It's every day is different. Every class is different. It really makes you challenge what you're doing. I had a chair thrown at me when I was in Arizona. <laughs> and the funnier thing is, the kid's name was Jesus that did that. So Jesus threw a chair at me, <laughs> which is pretty funny. I, don't know, I think my favorite is just whenever the kids, like we were talking about those notes that were on my desk. Mm -hmm. Whenever a kid writes a note or a kid comes back from college to talk to me, to mm -hmm. see me, you know, one, two, three years afterwards. I think those just in general, knowing that I've made the difference in their life, that they come back, that they, you know, I mean, kids this year asked me why I didn't get upset when they were acting up in class. I'm like, honestly, no matter what, you guys aren't going to change the way I teach. Mm -hmm. You know, how many of you are going to stay in touch with me in five years? Like a third of the class puts their hands up, another third go kind of, I'm like, exactly. And I would love to stay in touch with all of you, but if you don't, it's not going to be the end of the world. Mm -hmm. But those ones that do is, I think, anytime they come back to visit or anytime my kids from Arizona or New York stay in touch, that's a favorite moment mm -hmm. right there, I think. In Arizona, I taught middle school, so that's okay. different. In Arizona, I like to say I was the department head in my first year because I was the only science teacher in a K-8 building. And I taught, earth, or, sorry, I taught science, math, and English all okay. by myself. And I ran the yearbook. So that was its own thing because their school district ended in eighth grade and went to a brand new district for high school. Okay. To me, that was really weird. New York was a lot of fun, but I was teaching at my own high school. Okay. And so that was cool, but it was also really weird because... How, how many years removed? Uh, ten. Ten years? Okay. Yeah. So some of the teachers would have still been around. Yeah, so I actually had to share an office with one of my teachers. <laughs> it took me half the year before I could call him by his first name. That's funny. You know? Yeah. And the worst part is, like, I taught a kid who I was in the same limo with their older brother for prom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And because it was a year in between Arizona and New York, I was working at a local restaurant. So I was working with kids that were at my high school okay. the summer before. So they knew me as Rick instead of the teacher. Mm -hmm. So that was a little weird, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad I did it, but it was weird. And then... I ended up going, subbing a long-term year at another school, which is actually how I got the job down here. Because okay. somebody I worked with there got a job down here. I actually started third week of school down here okay. my first year. So, you know, new state, new tests, mm -hmm. and starting three weeks late, I was just trying to play catch-up myself. That's funny. I started about three weeks into the school year because I came out and interviewed and it was their first week yeah and it was actually a little more than three i think it was six weeks because then i went back had to pack up yeah and drive out so i came in part way through the year yeah i interviewed the friday before labor day weekend and they were going to interview me at like three thirty, so i knew they were desperate so i went in yeah. there full of myself yeah but i think i'm a horrible interview for a job i just went in there like well if they're doing it this late they're desperate mm -hmm. so in the interview i'm like if i get the job well, let's just be honest when you offer me this job, where can I stay? <laughs> you know? So, and I was driving down to Virginia Beach after that to go to run a race. They called me halfway down. I had the job offer. Nice. So it was pretty cool. I mean, it was, it was split between two schools, which stinks because you had to drive in between them. Mm. But, you know, it was foot in the door kind of thing. When, so you worked part-time here and part-time at another school? Yeah, time. I was at Henrico High School in the morning. Then I had to drive over here during the lunch blocks. Then I taught here in the afternoon. Okay. And then I've been here ever since. Okay. And right. I, I that, love it here. Is Henrico High, is that on the West End? Or is it it's it? also in East End School. It's right near the racetrack. Okay. So, okay, I know. I know so it's there. literally like a mile down the road. Yeah. So when in the race is in town, there's no sporting events at Henrico High School because yeah. there's no parking. You don't no want to be around yeah. all the rednecks. No offense. <laughs> The drunks, because yeah. it's the race. People drink yep. there. Yep. You know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I when you I, I've driven by it a few times. I remember the. I think it's Azalea Road or something like that. Yeah. I lived here for about two years, and I drove by. I'm like, there's a high school right yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's right. It's really close to the city border too. Mm hmm So, I mean, it was a great high school. I liked it there. It's just, I was only there for the first two periods, and then as soon as the class was over, I was packing up and leaving to get over here. So I didn't get to know the teachers yeah, that well. It makes it a little Whereas here, I have to know everybody because I was here for most of the day, and then after school, when you're talking to people, yeah, 
you know, before school, everybody's running around trying to make their copies, get to their classroom door, and mm -hmm. just try not to go crazy. Is that so? Did you choose to stay here? Could you have gone either place? Well, I, it was just where the numbers were. Because okay. after my first year, we were dropped. I actually had to interview again because we went down from 13 chemistry classes to 10, and I was the extra person. Okay. But the other chemistry teacher ended up becoming an admin. So I was able to slide right in, which is okay. perfect for me, because cool. I was going to grab ulcers galore if I had to interview over and over again. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. As much as I didn't want to hear this, when I was a senior, I would go to a community college, because my path was very different than a lot of people. I went to an engineering school first, then in the middle of my junior year, I transferred to a state school, and I lost 30 credits worth of class mm. time. I mean, I still had the credits. But they didn't count for anything. Yeah. Fluid dynamics doesn't matter when you're trying to go for a liberal arts chemistry degree. Yeah. You know? So if I would have gone to, like, a, a community college or a state school to start with, it would have saved a lot of money okay. and time. But mostly just see what they like, you know? And don't be afraid to change a major. Most I would think most people go through at least two majors in college. Okay. You know, career paths change. But... Have fun with it by not drinking. My term is milkshakes in class. Don't drink too many milkshakes when you're in college. But, you know, the biggest thing for me when they're in college, take that 8 a.m. class because then they have to get up in the morning. The so it's a lot easier. Yeah. No one is there at 8 in the yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> get up at 8, you get to do your homework, and then you could actually go out and have a milkshake when you're turning 21. Yeah. <laughs> but in high school, it's just make sure you take your SATs, ACTs, if you don't want to do the college route, look into military, look into, you know, the tech fields. I mean, I have students that are plumbers, electricians, making as much as I do in their second year, third year. Well, it kills me knowing how much college I went through. <laughs> I'm proud of them, and yeah. I know I could call them if I need something. Yeah, I mean, I've sure. called students saying, hey, I need to work on my car. Can you help me out? You know, it's great. And that's another thing I love about teaching is you have those connections. With That's the kids. After 10 years, I didn't think about that. Yeah. You know, just even going out to the restaurants, you got a kid waiting on you. Mm -hmm. They might slip something for you. No, yeah, that I have had. I've gotten I've gotten some free upgrades, definitely, at, yeah. at some restaurants. You're like, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So I don't run as much as I should. I help, There's a store called Fleet Feet. It's a national brand, but each store is locally owned by their own okay. people. So I started running with them up in New York. I was engaged, and I wanted to get in shape for my wedding. So I started running, and then we broke up. So I kept running. That's how I ended up doing my first half marathon. Okay. Um, but I think running is a great therapy. Like, for me, when we broke up, I was able to run five miles with my friend, and I could complain the whole five miles because she couldn't keep up. <laughs> or she couldn't keep up and talk at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but you could. You could so, and, so. Yeah, so now the tables are completely reversed with the speeds with us. But it was a great just stress relief and it was healthy. It didn't you know, all it cost you was a pair of shoes and a good t shirt kind of mm -hmm. thing. So it's a program called No Boundaries or now it's called Fleet Feet Running Club. Um it's basically it's like the Couch to Five K program okay. but it's with people. Cause when I do Couch to Five K I'm like, Alright, I'm gonna do this. Just like when you do P ninety X. Alright, I get through the first week. And then you're just like, nope, not going to do that. Yeah. You know, so with this, I help coach that, and we meet twice a week. So it's a great because it gets me to run, and it's also, it makes me accountable because I'm making sure other people are there, okay. you know. So, like, I could, if somebody wants to do four miles at a 13-minute pace, I keep them right there the whole time. If I'm trying to do it myself, can't do it, <laughs> you know. But, like, when I'm trying to do it for somebody else to so lead them, I'm great with that. So... That's one reason I'm actually this is my last season coaching, so I can start running some more. Okay. You know, but I have a so since running I've done countless five Ks, maybe like fifteen half marathons, and I think I'm signed up for my sixth or seventh full marathon in November. Mm. And to be honest, that's all about the medals. <laughs> you know, like I did Disney. They have something called the Goofy Goofy Challenge. It's a five K, a ten K, a half, and a full. It's almost 50 miles in one weekend, but you walk away with six medals. Oh, wow. I mean, it costs you like $600 to do it, plus yeah. flight and hotel, but it's Disney, and it's yeah. cool yeah. to say you've done it. You know, it's just, for me, running is a way to try to get the stress out. Okay. You know, it's 
just something I need to do more often. Did it start out that way, or was it when you first started? Was it was it hard? Was it just? All oh, it's your... definitely still hard. <laughs> well, I mean, as far as the mental, because like I know from talking to a few runners, um, like I've heard a lot of people say like you have to run a certain amount to break through, and then, yeah, and then it switches over where it can be like a cathartic kind of like. Definitely, you know, I'm still at this stage because I only run with the group. Mm-hmm. You know, I could run a mile, and then I'm like, as soon as I walk, I'm done. Okay. You know. I could run a mile and then I'll try to do a walk run, but then it goes from three minutes in between, then two minutes, then one minute, then I'm just walking the rest of it okay. because I'm still at that mental block again because mm-hmm. I haven't been in a consistent thing. Okay. But when I was really running, I was able to, when I was coaching, you know, go out and drink all night and still run a half marathon <laughs> at a three minute slower pace to help people out. Yeah. I can't do that right now because I'm not in that okay. mental shape okay. or physical shape. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's times when I thought if you went for less than three miles, it was a waste of a run. <laughs> you know, because at that point I could run five miles easily. Yeah. But, yeah, it's definitely it's a mental block. To You know, you have to get so much under you. And it doesn't have to be fast. That's what I try to tell them. Like, when you're coaching, they're all mad because they're only doing 15-minute miles. I'm like, you could be uh, sitting on a couch. Mm-hmm. You're outside. You know, that's all that matters. We have people in our group that are eight minute miles. We have people in our group that are eighteen minute miles. As long as they're out, yeah. that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. Like that vlogger guy, the case guy, was talking about. He runs like thirteen miles every morning. If he doesn't, he gets real grumpy. He yeah. Get, get to run. So. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely it's. You know, there's times when I was a couple years ago, I'd meet one of my students to run in the morning, and it's you know, it's just an endorphin. It's just like anything. You know, if you get a good workout in. You know, when you're done, you feel like, well, you hate while well, you're doing it. When you're all done, you're like, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just feel so good. I mean, you, you want to shower, but you just feel good because you got all that going now. Like, if, especially if you could get to run in the morning, which I just hate getting up that early. Yeah. But then you got all that energy for the day and you're ready to go, mm-hmm. you know. So that's it's just a great feeling. And then I love, like, certain races we do. One thing you might want to check out is the Cameron Gallagher Speak Up 5K. Okay. Um, she is probably two years before you got here. She was a 16 year old girl that was battling depression, so she couldn't really hold a job for too long, and she wanted a car. So her parents said, Set a goal, you meet that goal, and you'll, we'll buy you a car. So she wanted to run a half marathon. So she ran the Shamrock Half Marathon down to Virginia Beach, crossed the finish line, hugged her father, and collapsed and passed away. Oh, wow. So, unbeknownst to the parents, she started a 5K looked up sponsors and all that stuff and now it's in its fifth year coming up and honestly I've probably done 100 races is my favorite race ever they have uh, silly string they have water guns they have like a rave section Mm. they have um, because it's through Bird Park there's a part where the trees go together and it's like all of her quotes and pictures from her bedroom Mm. and at the end there's a giant bouncy house coolest race you'll ever do you know, that would be for somebody really cool for you guys to get in touch with, too. Okay. You know, it's Speak Up 5K, the Cameron K. Gallagher Foundation. Okay. If you're and looking for more and, people. And that's a local thing. Yeah, it's a local thing. Their, their foundation headquarters is... It's in the Short Pump area somewhere. I can't think of where. Okay. But I can get you the contact information for them. Cool. Because they are amazing. And I was actually there... This is me just bragging now. I was their billboard last year. Nice. <laughs> you know, because as weird as I am in my classroom, I'm just the same way as I run. Like, okay. I have cat spandex and a tutu that I'm running in. Because <laughs> if you're out there, I don't, I'm don't. i not running to win a first place. I know that's not going to happen. I'm going out there to run as best I can and have fun and make other people laugh. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had people at the end of that race come up to me saying, I don't know who you are, but thank you because we were just following you, laughing at you the whole time. <laughs> you know, and... And I don't care because it's fun. It makes it fun for them, and that's what it's really about, I think. Yeah. It's the great thing about running is it's a community. It's, it's, I'd like to say it's a lot like motorcycles. You oh, know, okay. two motorcycles pass on the road. They do that little wave thing, you yeah. know? Don't have to know. It could be a, a Harley and a Suzuki. They're going to give it a little, hey, what's up? Same thing with running. You know, you're running down the road, and you give the little head nod or the little wave to somebody. They don't have their headphones in. They're going to wave back nine times out of ten. You know, it's just, it's its own little community, which makes it really great. Okay. And being, you know, an out-of-stater, which you understand, mm-hmm. sometimes, 
like you were saying, you started this so you could meet more people. You know, if I'm teaching and I'm grading papers, my group of people is this big. You know, so the running has allowed me to meet more people, especially being a coach. There's new people every year. You know, and some of them are some of my better friends now in Virginia where I was able to meet them through running. All right, so like I said, a little different episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. As you can see, it's quite late. Just got out of youth, grabbed a couple things I need, go home, have a little late dinner, and uh, start editing this episode. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if not, first off, you're not seeing this because this is the end of the video, but uh, for some reason you skipped to the end to see if there was any kind of fun special thing after the uh, last little title that I normally do. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think I have anything because I didn't really vlog today because I knew I had this interview. So see you guys tomorrow with a normal vlog episode. <laughs>